Hey, what's up DIYers? Mike Borders with the Mike Borders channel. Thank you for watching. Today we're talking radon gas systems and we are going to show you the difference between a passive system and an active system. Let's go take a look. All right, YouTubers downstairs in the basement now into the utility room or furnace room. We've got our furnace on our left hand side, fuse box, water heater, and there it is. You've got two pipes coming out of a circular cutout. That circular cutout is your sump pump chamber. And the smaller of the two pipes is the pipe that connects to your sump pump. And that sump pump pushes all that water up and out of your house, all the way out to your drain field. However, let's focus on that larger pipe. In most cases, it will be three to four inches in diameter. I've got a flashlight. Let's head over there right now. And let's start with the black cap. As you can see here, it is a solid black cap. You cannot see through it. And the cap itself is pretty secured in that circular cutout. However, notice one thing. See that little hole there that the additional pipe comes out of? That would never be allowed in an active system install in terms of radon systems. However, this system is currently a passive install. In addition, you will see rubber gaskets or seals that go around each of those pipes and those are to prevent any radon gases from coming up out of this cap. However, again, with that large hole there, this would never pass inspection for an active install. So with this cap itself, again, solid in color and you cannot see through it. Let's continue along the plumbing and follow the larger pipe and it will get to a point in our case it is labeled radon continue all the way up to the ceiling and where it makes a turn at the ceiling I want to stop right there and talk about the next item again since we have a passive install we do not have a pressure gauge installed between the point where it comes out of the ground and the point where it makes its turn at the ceiling so with that said the passive install uses what is referred to as stack effect. And stack effect basically is the outside air pressure working together with the inside air pressure and the pressure down below in your chamber and using those differential pressures to pull the radon gas up out of the ground and throughout your plumbing and out of your exhaust pipe, which is located all the way at the top of your roof. And as far as efficiency or effectiveness, the passive install that we have, hey, it works. However, having an active system, it would work a lot better. Let's continue along the ceiling and follow the plumbing. Just on the opposite side of this beam, you will notice that the radon pipe makes a 90 degree turn and goes straight through the ceiling there. And in most cases for code purposes, that radon pipe has to go directly up from this point all the way to your roof in a straight manner without any additional turns. So with that said, let's go upstairs and gain access to our attic. And before we do that, it's important to make sure that you stay on the same side of the house that you are right now because your radon system is not going to make an aggressive turn and make its way to the opposite side of the house. So when you go upstairs, Again, make sure you're on the same side of the house as you are downstairs. Upstairs in the bedroom now, here's our walk-in closet and there is our attic access point again on the same side of the house as your radon plumbing was down below in the basement. So once you find your access point, this may be your only access point to the radon pipe in your attic, which means in the event that you have a radon system company come out to install an active system, this is where they are going to gain access to the upper portion of your pipe to install that fan. However, we actually have a friendlier access access point which is outside in the upper portion of our garage in the loft. Let's head outside and I'll show you. All right YouTubers, once you are upstairs, it is absolutely imperative for safety purposes that you are very careful as you maneuver on the upper portion of your loft. For example, there's some plywood laid down and that is basically our safe zone of walking and as you can see here, that's the ceiling drywall and in the event that I put my weight on that, chances are I would fall right through it. So be extremely careful as you maneuver. And I'm going to maneuver over to a point where you can see our pipe way back there. There is a better view of it. As you can see, the white pipe back there. And I'm going to do my best to get closer for your convenience so you can get a better look at it. All right, YouTubers, here we are much closer to the radon pipe itself. And let's go all the way down to the bottom portion. As you can see here, I've got a bunch of insulation both on the floor and on the walls. The bottom portion of the radon pipe comes out of the ceiling and it is strapped to the boards and it continues up 
to the exit point, as you can see there. And you'll notice the upper portion of the pipe is also strapped to the board. Next thing I wanna talk about is the pipe itself and what is not installed on the pipe. As you'll notice from the lower portion of the pipe all the way to the top portion where it goes through the ceiling and out to the roof, there is absolutely nothing else installed along that pipe, which again is a clear indication that we have a passive system installed and it is using stack effect to pull the radon gases from down below in the sump pump chamber up through the plumbing and out of the exhaust portion here. And with that said, an active system will have a fancy fan installed at this very point along the plumbing, which enhances the suction of the radon gas from down below through the plumbing and out the top. From here, I'll carefully get down and go outside and show you the exhaust pipe. And real quick, prior to leaving up here, right over there is our access point where we were just below in our walk-in closet and the entire cap itself is covered with this insulation. So do take that into consideration when you are pushing your cap up and shifting it to the side. You may have to move a bunch of insulation very similar to this. Outside now, do your best not to confuse your radon gas exhaust pipe with your fireplace exhaust pipe. As you can see here, we do have a fireplace and that is the exhaust pipe for that. And in most cases, it will be aluminum or steel. All the way to the left, you will see our PVC pipe coming out of the roof. That is our radon exhaust pipe. And you may have an additional pipe in most cases. However, from here, I'm going to go to a different side of the house, give you a better look of that pipe. All right, YouTubers walked over to a different side of the house and there it is right up top. Nothing fancy, it's just a straight PVC pipe coming out of the roof. So from here, in a few days, the brand new active system will be installed and we will do a full walkthrough and show you what that looks like. We'll see you in a few days. All right, YouTubers, the passive system has been converted to an active system, and let's take a look. And let's start with the actual cap. I've got a flashlight in place, and take a look at that cap. Before, again, remember, it was black and solid. You could not see through it. And what they did during the conversion from a passive to an active is they cut that black solid cap off and while we were doing the project, I went ahead and requested a brand new sump pump to be installed, and that is because this cap is sealed, as you can see all around is a bead of silicone creating that airtight seal not allowing any of that radon gas to escape from that cap. In addition around the radon pipe it is silicone and around the sump pump pipe it is silicone as well as the cuts they had to make to position the cap in place. In addition that little circle here that is a safety valve and what that does in the event that water gathers on the top portion of this cap, whether it's a leak from any portion of the plumbing or the water heater close by, water will go into that hole and once the pressure from the water rests on that lower portion of the valve, it is going to open and the water is going to fall inside the sump area. However, if there is no water on the top portion of that inner valve, it is spring loaded up to create the airtight seal ultimately not allowing any of the radon gases to escape. So again, that's the cap. So we will always be able to look down inside our sump chamber to see what's going on, which is pretty cool. And continuing up, you have a pressure gauge. And they put a sticker here, radon reduction system, do not tamper with or disconnect. And there is the pressure gauge. You will notice one side is higher than the other. The left is higher, the right is lower. And that is exactly how it should always look. Because if it looks like that, that is a clear indication that your fan is working and sucking the air up and your pressure gauge is showing the pressure differences inside the system or plumbing due to the fan. And on the side, let's take a look. Radon reduction system. And one additional thing I wanna show you. Estimated annual fan, $30. Check that out, not bad at all. They tapped the pressure gauge into the plumbing just by drilling a hole as you can see here. So those are the differences between the passive system converting to an active system. From here, let's go upstairs and get inside the garage and take a look at the new fan. And before we go back upstairs, what I wanna do is get the camera close to the pipe. Can you hear the difference? There is suction inside that plumbing now, which there was not suction or sounds when it was just the passive system. So again, that's a clear indication that your fan is working properly. In addition, that little part right there is some leftover debris during the cutting process of the valve. And as you can see, it is slightly moving and that also tells us our fan is working. All right, YouTubers, we're upstairs in the loft and a couple things they did. Number one, they added an additional electrical box for the circuit for the fan. And then they fed that power into one of our existing outlets. So 
Let's continue carefully shifting ourselves closer to the fan way over there. Halfway to the fan, here is the circuit or electrical box I was just talking about. Radon reduction system, do not tamper with or disconnect. Radon fan circuit. So in the event that you have a passive system, you will not have that. However, for the active system, you will have this. Here we are, we've made it to the fan. Let's start with the original plumbing that was coming out of the ceiling or walls. Once it got to the point where the fan was going to be installed, the fan was unable to sit flush with the board. So what they had to do was add additional plumbing, which routed the fan outward away from the beam to give the fan enough room to be installed. And then at the top, they added additional plumbing to route it back toward the beam and into the original pipe there. And it continues out through the ceiling and outside on the roof. So pretty friendly install for the technician. After installing it, they routed the electrical wiring all the way down to that circuit box I was just showing you a bit ago. As far as the fan, you'll come to the side here and you have two arrows. One is the airflow. Obviously the airflow is being exhausted and pushed up out of the exhaust pipe on top of the roof. And the rotation of the fan is counterclockwise as shown here. And to create that airtight seal with the additional PVC plumbing, they used rubber hoses with clamps. Because creating that airtight seal is extremely important to alleviate any radon gases from escaping out of your plumbing and into your attic or house. That would not be good. From here, let's head outside. All right, YouTubers, we are outside. There's the exhaust pipe and really no difference from what it was prior to the conversion. It is still one foot out of the roof and little quick story on that that's a two foot pipe and that is the original pipe that was connected to the top portion of that pipe up there and as the technician installed the fan in the attic he pushed that pipe up and then climbed on the roof and cut the pipe down to one foot to make it look presentable and professional so that's it youtubers now we know the differences between passive and active radon systems from here do us a favor below the video you'll see that thumbs up icon click on that like the video subscribe to the channel definitely ring your youtube bell that would be very helpful to us we would really appreciate it thanks again for watching and also scrolling at the top right now is a link to a playlist. It has a bunch of helpful videos on radon systems. Definitely check them out.